Hello, Calc Kids. This is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. I'm excited about this one today, not only because it's easy, but because it is the foundation for what we're going to do for the rest of Unit 8, and which means for the AB students, at least, this is the foundation for what you need for the rest of your calculus. Sorry, BC kids, but you're not going to be done yet after Unit 8. Well, let's remind ourselves real quick, how do you find the area under a curve of f of x? I'm just going to gra uh, graph here some random random graph like this. It doesn't really matter. So f of x like that. And then how do you find the area? The area is under the curve is between the function and the x axis like this. Okay, so just kind of lightly shade something down like, like that. And now I'm going to graph another one. How about I do some type of parabola looking shape? Different color though. Red parabola goes up like this. Now, what's the area under the curve of that? It would be all of this area like so and to the x-axis and so forth. So now the question becomes, what is the area that's in between them? Well, you can see here, if I looked only at the bounded area, just right here, so I'm going to shade this in with gray. This is my bounded area. If I was only looking at that one specific area, then I would only go from this point where they cross to this point where they cross for my, uh, for my integral right? This A and B. This would be my A. This would be my B. And then I would take the one that's on top and subtract the one that's on bottom. See here? Because if I just took all of the blue area, I take the blue area and then I subtract the red area, that would give me my answer. So here's how you do the area between two curves. You take one function and subtract the other one. How do you know which one you start with? It's the one that is larger. So as long as f of x is larger than g of x, on the interval a to b, then it's f minus g. As soon as they cross like this, then you have to have set up a different integral. So it only works while f is larger than g. And then you get the area that's in between them. Okay, so get that written down and let's try a problem. So I have some curves here, a parabola x squared plus two, the line y equals negative x. And I also have to put in the lines x equals zero and x equals one. So let's put those in. Here's my x equals zero line. Here's my x equals one line, and that's going to set up boundaries for an area. So this area right here, that's what we're gonna try and find. What is the area of this? So the setup is, we start off with my integral, and the lowest part of the x value, the lowest x value is a zero, so we're gonna go from zero to the highest x value, which is one, and then I take the function that's on top. So the graph on top is the parabola. So I will say x squared plus 2. So there's my first one. And then I'm going to subtract the graph that's on bottom, which in this case is just a negative x. And then that's all with respect to x. So let's, uh, let's see here. I could clean that up just a little bit. So 0 to 1, that is x squared plus 2 plus x with respect to x. And now the antiderivative. You've done this lots of times. There's my antiderivative, and we're going from 0 to 1. And now we'll plug the 1 in first. Uh, let's, let's go up here now. Plug the 1 in first, and then we subtract. So there's my 1 plugged in, and then we subtract the 0 plugged in, which is just 0. All right, and then from here, you just get common denominators, add it together, simplify. So we get 17 sixths as our final answer. So that is the area, just barely under 3, is the area of this piece right here in blue, in between these two curves from zero to one. Okay, pretty easy. That's all we have to do. You take the one on top, subtract the one on bottom. Sometimes though, you will not be given the graph. So if you don't have the graph, that means you just have to figure this out on your own. You don't even have to graph it to be able to do this. You just think, all right, well, if it's bounded, that means these two things have to equal each other at some point. They're gonna cross. So let's take two minus x squared and set it equal to the other function x. Now, if it was really complicated, we might have to grab a calculator to figure out where these two things are crossing. We are gonna do that in this video lesson here in just a minute, but let's just do this one without. I'm bringing everything over on the right side. I get x squared plus an x and then subtract the two. And then this is easy enough to factor. It becomes x plus two times x minus one. And that means these two graphs cross each other at x equals negative 2 and at x equals 1. So if they cross there, it's going to create some boundary lines. And if you think about what this graph, I'll just sketch a quick little graph. 2 minus x squared, it's a parabola that opens down like this. And then y equals x is a horizontal line like that. Not horizontal, excuse me, diagonal line. y equals x line. 
All right, so this is the, this is what we're doing, and we're trying to find this area here. So x equals negative 2 is where it crosses on the left. x equals 1 is where it crosses on the right. So it's not required to be able to know how to graph them, but it definitely can help if you get a general idea of what the shape of the graph looks like. So now I can set up my integral. What is that? The integral is going to be from negative 2 to 1, and now I have to do the graph that was on top, which is the parabola. So it's, oh, wait. I better do this first. What if you didn't know which one was on top? Like if we don't have the graph and you don't know which one's on top, let me show you how. If you take your boundary from negative two to one, you just pick any number in between there and you plug them in and see which one's larger. So for example, zero is in between the interval negative two to zero. So I'm going to take zero and plug it in here, two minus zero squared, and then compare it to a zero plugged in there. So which one's larger? This is two, this is zero, so this is larger than that. So that's what, how you can check and know that 2 minus x squared comes before the x. Uh, 2 minus x squared, and then I subtract the one on bottom. So subtract, and then it's just an x, and then that whole thing is with respect to x. And then from there, you do the whole antiderivative stuff again, solve it. We won't need to do that in this video. You know how to do that. We've been practicing a lot. But in case you wanted to just check to see if you get the right answer, the answer to that is going to be 9 over 2, in case you wanted to check on your own. So that's how you do it if you aren't given the graph. Now let's do something else. We're going to set up an integral, so we don't need to solve this one. We're just setting up an integral that allows us to find the area of this thing. So we are bounded. It's oh, in the first quadrant only. Well, that's important. It says first quadrant. So we only want up here, and then it's bounded by these other two lines. So here's the trick to this. Look at the top. It's the same line. All the curve is just this the whole way up here, right? It never changes. It's just this square root curve. But on bottom, we have the line y equals 0, so we're coming across here as y equals 0, and then right here at x equals 6, it changes, and it becomes this line, x minus 6. So you have to look at the top. Does the top ever change? No. If it did, we'd have to set up two integrals. Down here, does the bottom ever change? Yes, and since it does, we have to set up a separate integral. So think of it like this. This right here is like a boundary since the bottom changed it's like it's two separate integrals one for the one on the left and one for here on the one on the right so we're setting up two separate integrals for this the we're going to go from zero to six where the the function on top is square root of x and the function on bottom is zero right because we're just going to the x-axis so we don't need to say anything we don't have to say minus zero so just that one and then we'll add the other integral which is going to go from zero uh, not zero but six up until we get to this point here, which is 9, so from 6 to 9. And then it is the function on top is the square root of x. And we are subtracting the function on bottom, which is x minus 6. Notice I put parentheses around it because I want to remember to, to uh, distribute that negative sign. And then that is all with respect to x. So there's the setup for this thing. So we don't have to solve it. It was just setting it up. But again, I could take that minus, make it minus x plus 6 if I want to distribute it. But that's the setup here. So again, how do you know if you need more than one? You follow the top. Does the top boundary ever change? On this one, it didn't. But it might in other ones. Then you follow the bottom. Did the bottom boundary ever change? Yes. The moment where it changes is where you have to stop your integral and then start a new one. Okay, so just be real careful about that as you set these up. You'll have some good practice ones to work with on this, and it will be on the mastery check. All right, next is we're going to use a calculator. So if you have your graphing calculator handy, you'll want to grab that just to practice this with me. We're going to do this like we did before and figure out where these two things cross. So natural log of x, when does it equal 1 half x minus 2? Now, just so you know, I'm going to sketch down here. A natural log graph does something like that. And then 1 half x minus 2, I'm down here at negative 2, and then it's up 1 over 2. It's going to do something like that. Okay, so you can see this is the area that I'm looking for. But I don't know where these two things cross. Like, that's hard. Like, trying to use algebra to solve this thing would be really difficult. So we're going to use the calculator to help us on this. So let's plug in these two functions. All right, there we go. And I think a standard window, if I do zoom six, a standard window would be probably good enough for here. Yep. All right. I can't see very well here at crossing and you, it doesn't look like the line keeps going, but that's because it gets so steep that the calculator can't handle graphing it. But this is a good representation of, of what is happening. So where do they cross? Let's figure out the first point. So second, calculate the point of intersection is number five. Again, if you don't have a TI-84, I'm sorry, you're going to have to figure this out on your own, but this is really a useful tool. So first curve, I can't hit enter yet because I'm not on it. I need to move off here off the x equals zero. So now I'm on the blue line. This is my natural log curve. 
First curve, enter. Second curve is the, the straight line, enter. Now guess, I wanna know this one. I don't wanna know that one. Hit enter. All right, so there it is. I could go ahead and write this whole thing down, but that's where you might have a rounding error. So what I'm gonna do instead, once I have this screen, I'm gonna second and then quit out of this screen. And this is what's really cool. Your calculator is remembering. It knows what it just did. I'm going to immediately store. So this button way down here where it says STO, I'm gonna store it as alpha A. So store it as the letter A, hit enter, and there it is. That was my decimal. So now let's go to the next one. Let's calculate the other intersection point. So five is my intersect. And then now I'm trying to figure out where this one is. So first curve, enter, second curve, enter. But now I don't wanna hit enter yet until I'm further over here, closer to it. So, all right, now I want it to give me a good estimate here. There's the intersection, eight point something. So immediately I'm going to quit from this. I want to store it as alpha B and I hit enter and there they are. So I'm gonna drag this over to my screen so I can view what I have there. So I'm gonna write up that I have, th this happens in two places when X equals 0 0.1455516, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just gonna say that I'm use storing that as the letter A. And then my other one is x equals 8.2109331, a whole bunch of things. And I'm storing that as my letter B. Now here's what's nice is the calculator remembers more than just these decimals. It's remembering more than that. And that's a good thing because then you don't have a rounding error. So now when I write my integral, my integral is going to be the, what am I doing? boundaries, this first boundary to that boundary. Instead of having to write out these whole decimals, I just say, I'm going from A to B because I've already shown right here what A and B are. And uh, then what? Oh, the first curve is the natural log of X minus, and then I subtract this whole thing. So I'm gonna say minus one half X and then plus two, right? I'm subtracting the whole thing. So I distribute that negative and that's with respect to X. And then what does it equal? Well, I just go to my calculator. Here's another cool thing. This is awesome, watch this. So I go to my calculator. Remember how I already plugged it into y equals? There's my first function, there's my second function. The one that's on top, the one that's on bottom. So let's quit out of this. Math, uh, where's the math button? Math, option number nine, my integral, math nine. And now I do alpha a, because it remembers, that's the lower limit. Alpha B, it remembers, that's the upper limit. And then I'm gonna say variables, Y variables, function Y1. We've done this lots of times this year. I'm gonna pull up what's in Y1 and subtract what I put into Y2. And then just remember that's all with respect to X. Okay, so that's gonna, the calculator remembers all these things. I've already typed it all in. So boom, there my is my answer. So this is the answer you want to be able to round. That's my final answer. 8.784, so rounded and truncated is the same thing. Now here's why that's so good, because if you had rounded this and then rounded this one right here, like maybe truncated it and used those as your boundaries, it might not give you the same answer. In fact, it probably won't because it won't be as accurate. So you want to use as many of the decimals as possible. So if you had like typed in this whole thing, that pro that would give you the same answer. If you typed in this whole thing, it would give you the same answer. But if you can be faster with your calculator and storing it, then it'll uh, come in handy for when you have to move quickly through an AP exam. On to the last type of problem. This one I'm giving to you because it has shown up quite often on an AP exam, a problem that's like this. It may not be exactly like this, but it's pretty similar with this finding a line that divides the region. So I've got this region, two squared of X, X squared over four, the parabola, the square root graph that are bounding this region. And what I wanna come up with is a line, X equals K, so a vertical line that splits it right down the middle. So let's say, what's the middle? From zero to four would be two, right? So X equals two. Does that split this and make it exactly equal? Well, I bet it's close, but I can't imagine that that line right in the middle, x equals two, perfectly divides these two areas to be exactly the same thing. There's just no way, that's not gonna happen. The shapes look different, so it's not gonna be the same area. What we're trying to do is figure out where is that line? Like, is it moved over here a little bit? Do I move it up here a little bit? Like, where does it fall to make it so that these two pieces are perfectly equivalent to each other? And when I say two pieces, I mean the left side and the right side of the line. 
So here's what we'll do. We'll say, uh, let's set up our integral. We're gonna say we'll go from this lower boundary of zero to the upper boundary of k. Because again, I'm, I'm gonna put an imaginary line of k. x equals k. I don't know where that is. Function on top is two square root of x and then minus the parabola x squared over four with respect to x. And then that has to equal, now I will go from that same value of k up until I get to the end of my boundary here, four. Uh, and then I do the exact same thing, two square root of x minus x squared over four with respect to x. All right, start doing some anti-differentiation. So antiderivative of this is, is that, hopefully you caught that with this weird fraction stuff going on, the 12, because it's x cubed, so over three and four, 12, blah, blah. All right, now that's gonna equal, and now I do the same exact thing. It's gonna be, the integrand becomes exactly the same thing I just did, but this time it's evaluated from k to four. Now we plug in the upper boundary first, the k goes in first, and then a zero. So this two thirds times the two, that just makes us four thirds. So there's the k plugged in, and then minus the zero gets plugged in, and that's just zero, so that's easy. And then equals, and now the four gets plugged in. So I've got this four thirds once more. Okay, think about this. This is the square root of four, right? So the square root of four is just a two, and then it's cubed. So I did the square root part first. Minus. And then four cubed, oh my goodness, four cubed is 64 twelfths. There's other ways probably to make that a little easier. And then minus, and now I plug in the K. So minus, the K gets plugged in here. So it's gonna look just like this. All right, now how do we solve this? We are definitely using a calculator, okay? This is gonna be a calculator problem to help us figure this stuff out because what I'll do is uh, this, when I take this minus and distribute, distribute. So when I distribute here, it's minus four thirds. So I would add four thirds over here, which means basically I'm just doubling this. So it's eight thirds, K to the three halves. And then over here, the minus distributes to that minus. So that makes it plus this, which means you have to subtract it over here, which again is gonna double us. So it's two twelfths. Two twelfths is the same as k cubed over six. So it's basically whatever happens over here, you're gonna bring this other k over and it doubles. It happens every time. Okay, the minus zero, I, don't have, I could ignore that. Now this, this we don't have to totally simplify. We're gonna use a calculator anyway. So now I can do two cubed is eight, eight times four, that's 32. So 32 thirds minus 64 twelfths. Yes, I could reduce that, but who cares? I'm gonna use a calculator anyway. Let me show you what I mean. So now I go straight to figuring out where these things will equal each other. So let's go y equals, clear that stuff out and type in my new problem. So there's my left side. And then the right side, I can type it exactly like it looks. 32 divided by three minus 64 divided by 12. See, there's no reason to have to simplify this. Oops, 64. You don't have to simplify this because it'll figure it out on its own. The calculator knows it knows how to do the subtraction of fractions. So let's just enter. Uh, hit the graph and let's see where they cross. All right, this is nice. It crosses right there. Sometimes you might have to change the window of your of your screen. If this number was like 100, then I have to change my y max way up to 100. So now there's two places where it crosses. So which one do I want? This is where you have to go back to the original problem. Here it's going from zero to four. So the value of k, the line that separates it into two equal parts, has to be between zero and four. So it's not gonna be this one. So that's the one I'm looking for. So second, calculate the intersection point of these two curves and then uh, just somewhere Close to that one. Boom, drag that over here. So that's pretty small there. I don't know if you can see, see that, but it's gonna be K is about one point, and this is where you can round, 1.764. So that value of K is where it splits right down, not down the middle, but it splits it into two equal parts. So 1.75 looks to be somewhere right around there. So that would make it so that the left side of that line is equivalent to the right side. Now it may not look like it, more of like an optical illusion, but this would make it so that those two parts are exactly equal. Okay, we've covered everything we needed to cover now. So uh, you've got this first part of finding the area between curves. Next lesson, we're gonna do the same type of thing, but with respect to Y instead of respect to X, it's not gonna be too bad. You'll, it'll actually might be easier than this lesson. Okay, rock that master check, and I will see you back in our next lesson.